What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. We have here today the Xiaomi Mi 9T and the Pixel 3a. And I want to go ahead and do two benchmark tests for you guys in relation to the new Snapdragon 730 processor in the Mi 9T with Snapdragon 670. So first things first, let's go ahead and run Geekbench 4 and we'll see what we get. These have not been ran on either of these devices yet, so it's a fair benchmark. We'll be back, guys. guys so you can see just how much quicker the Mi 9T was and here you can see some score comparisons as well you can see on the Snapdragon 730 the single core of 2516 and the multi core of 6780 and just how far behind especially on the single core score the Pixel 3a with its Snapdragon 870 excuse me 670 chipset lagged all right so we got that out of the way let's go ahead and do one more and this time we're going to go ahead and use and 22 benchmark we'll go ahead and allow all these we'll get all this installed and we'll be right back all right everything finished loading up as as you can see we have our device screen pulled up showing you the breakdown of the device specifications you do have the 1080 by 2340 resolution display on the Mi 9T and a 1080 by 2220 display on the Pixel 3a. You see all your array of camera setups and all that. We're not going to go into that now. Let's go ahead and begin this test and we'll be back once again. <music> Alright guys, as you can see, finally these tests have finished and there is definitely, definitely, definitely a substantial difference between these two processors. Whether it comes to the memory, the user interface, the graphics, or the CPU, all these scores are pretty much ridiculously lower on the Pixel 3a than on this new Mi 9T. So again, if you're a spec guy, this will show you the difference that this itinerative bump makes with these two processors. The last test I want to go ahead and do is not really anything important for, say, the device necessarily, but for the networks. We're going to go ahead and run off our Wi-Fi speedtest.net and see what we get from these results. So we'll wait till this finds what's going on. You can see we got Google Fi here and T-Mobile on the right. One, two, three. And for those of you keeping track as well, Google Fi in this case is using T-Mobile's network. So it's pretty interesting to see the difference at that point in time between the two download speeds. Um, 
Whereas you can see Fi actually overtaking the T-Mobile SIM card on the right. We'll go ahead and run this test twice and we'll be done. All right, first test was 3430 and then 12 and 15. One more time. And you can see this time we got a little bit lower on our download speeds, 22 on Fi and then 26 on the T-Mobile SIM card. Pretty much comparable as far as what I've seen. I haven't been getting too much higher. When their new 5G network rolls out, it'll be a huge difference, averaging about 260 um, right now in New York for the 5G test. That is it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. We'll catch you in the next one.